tutorial question and answers. This past session is more or less uh, catered for those students at the six program. However, level three students can get a try. It is the local exhaust ventilation system. All right, let's try to get 2018 or so, uh, this particular past paper. Um, it says uh, an employer wants to use a local exhaust ventilation system to control employees, this word in the corner here, exposure to a hazardous gas generated during a manufacturing process. Part A and part 1 of part A says outline control options that the employer should consider before deciding an LEV system is the appropriate means of control for four marks. Part 2 of Part A, outline what the employer should consider when specifying an LEV system to control this hazardous um, gas. Part B, other than the employer, identify two other persons with responsibilities in relation to an LEV system. Right? Just for those of us who are pretty new to PASIPAS, the Ola Nibosh scheme would have mentioned certain verbs and there are two verbs mentioned in this past paper. One was the verb outline, the other in part B was the verb identify. I think by far outline has been the most problematic verb anyway. So just a quick breakdown here, outline used uh, whenever you see that 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 verb being used expand a bit and give about maybe two to three sentences on each point um, marks to be awarded there are four marks available and so you would need four separate answers now each of them would have to be about two lines to three lines long if there is something that you feel that you can say um, in more than three lines fine but um, don't overdo it. It should not be, um, you know, like a half a page on one point. It should just be about two to three lines on each point. It's okay to use point form, but make sure answers of an appropriate length being about the two lines to the three lines. Just before looking at this past paper, it is advised that you go um, and get this guide. They produce guidances um, for most health and safety issues anyway. Um, so this one is on the LEV and there's a guidance for that on the HSE website. You can get it from Google as well. Um, HSG258, a must read. The title of this guidance, Controlling Airborne Contaminants at Work, a guide to local exhaust ventilation system. Just a quick breakdown here of what it is. Um, so that's the link there. You can possibly just click on that or I guess um, copy that over. I think what is missing here would have been, uh, let me say I could probably just move the webcam a bit. It, uh, HSG258.pdf um, in, um, in the end of it there. Right, so you can all you really have to do is put in, uh, in Google it, and it will come more or less on it. It's geared at. It's more or less geared at. Written for employers who use and to use LEV. The guidance will also help suppliers and employee safety representatives. All of these groups guide, maintain, and use effective LEV from the inhalation of hazardous substances. They are from the health and safety um, executives. So um, don't really, you know, um, you know, look at this possible without first getting your hands on HSG 258. Um, right, so what I did, I think I have to again move this uh, time a bit, right, out here. Um, well, right, so the first outline control measures, or sorry, control options before deciding an LED system is an appropriate means of control. So um, just take a look at the question, those of us who are familiar with this anyway, um, the way to answer a question. I mentioned before you have the verb there being outlined. We need to read the question again to make sure that we understand what is being um, asked for. So it says outline control options that the employer should consider before deciding an LEV system. So, 
the key word here um, would have been um, this is not deciding you know when and if they say before what you need to consider is the higher order of controls basically what you'll probably get or you can think of those from the um, from the control hierarchy right so LEV of course is not the first control um, you know you have eliminate substitute you know engineering control etc so in the guidance though they made mention of a hierarchy there and that this is what I would have reproduced on this slide so um, some of the items the employee needs to consider before deciding an LEV system is the elimination hazardous gas generation in the process or reducing either the amount of gas generated or the time for which it is generated in the process size of the source modify the process to reduce the frequency and duration of emission reduce involved within with a process apply simple controls example fitting lids to the equipment so there is a hierarchy here mentioned in hsg 258 again the idea is that you go for the higher order of controls and most of us would know some of these already eliminate the need for the hazardous gas um you know limit the uh the the duration of exposure here they have mod uh, here, here they have modified the process um to reduce the amount of which is a number of frequency of emission and the duration of emission right so not all of them being complicated um the idea here though was to understand that these are uh, before the lev system uh, is appropriate and what the employer would have needed to consider um part b so you can probably move this back to the i guess to the top a bit now maybe just to the side here right and i think it completely went um nonetheless i guess we can continue outline what the employer should consider when specifying an lev system um to control this hazardous gas so um outline what they when specifying an LEV system to control this hazardous gas so this part of it really specification of an LEV system um, so the employer would need to have specific knowledge and understanding of the process that is to be controlled by LEV the property such as how it would arise from the process and how it would move in air the need for the operators working in the area maintenance requirement of the lev right so all of these are potential answers what the employer would need to consider he would need to know and there's a lot more to it um i think i have some on the other side as well um there's a lot there's a lot more to it right so um the employer would need to know about the specification of the lev system right so all of this would have been completed in the lesson for the level six students and um, I, I can take any point and do an example of it. I guess I can probably just use maybe two or three from here. So um, what the employer should consider, for example, would have been hood design. Now we did come, we actually did cover hood design video, LEV um, systems anyway. So you need to talk about like different types of hood. We would have mentioned the canopy hood. Uh, we would have mentioned, I believe, the flange on that. So you can probably mention that or at least the way for getting the two lines it would have been saying an employer need to be aware of different types of capturing hoods and uh, they need to be fitted with a flange right you know to kind of create a better capture zone for the hazardous gas right um second point the need for airflow indicators and other instrumentation again this was covered in the previous lesson so if you take a look at that, you will know that there are certain instruments that use some measure in air flow. You have the manometers, and I think I mentioned two of those there, or probably more than two. There was the rotating vane. Um, I think there was also the digital anemometer as well. And then you have those instruments used to measure pressure, which we would have called the manometers. And of course, you had the U-tube manometer as well as the pitot tube manometer, as well as digital as well. Right, so in writing those lines, those are what you have to say. The employer needs to be aware of um, airflow. You can mention things like the transport velocity, and that has to be measured by the anemometer. Right, you can talk about things like static pressure if you had a look at that lesson, monitored uh, by the manometers. Right, so this is all about specifications, what the employer should consider 
um, about the LAB, the size of the hood, the type of hood, the airflow, the, um, the capture velocity, the transport velocity, etc., the static pressure, capture zones, working zones, and breathing zones, the general principles of dock work. So remember we spoke about that, we spoke about things like uh, it being um, smooth and round and not too much of bends and whatever have you, right? Air movers, which would have been different types of fans. Uh, you have the centrifugal fan um, that was mentioned in the previous lesson, different type of air cleaners. You have fabric filters, electrostatic precipitators, and the list go on. So that is what you have to add to this to get the mark. Um, the principles of how to discharge contaminated air safely and replace it with clean air. Um, so this is the last piece of it already. Um, part B. Other than the employer, identify two other persons with responsibilities in relation to an LEV system. Again, this is um, Quite simple. Um, what they would have wanted here with the verb is identify, so it's not quite an outline. However, um, I, I don't think it's just uh, um, you know say the name of the other persons and say designers or whatever have you, but it's also to give a line on what the person is to do. So other than the employer, um, identify two other persons with responsibilities in relation to an LEV system. So I have your designers and what should they be aware of? Um, how to apply hood design. The designers would say, you know, what type of hood, uh, what type of capture hood to use on the uh, on the hazardous gas, right? So you can look at that. If you, if you know the type of hoods, we did mention them in the previous lesson. You could, you could actually add one of that there. Um, the LEV installer, another type of person, they need to know how to install the LEV system um, safely so you can get that slide back the basic principles of uh, lev right the basic principles of LEV, uh, lev hood design and proper application and how to install according to the specified design lev maintainers and repair engineers what do they need to know what assessment methods to use to check the lev system performance and how it's being maintained Again, all of that is about, you know, air velocity and uh, captive velocity, etc. What routine maintenance is needed following instructions such as those in the user manual. So I've listed three here, um, three other persons that have responsibility with an LEV system. Uh, beside that of the employee, you have the designers, LEV installers, and those who do maintenance, right? Repair engineers. You also have a couple more, I mean, but it's two marks anyway. You also have like employees, um, etc., that they have their responsibilities as well. But it's two, so I have three in the slides, and that is sufficient to get this one um, off, right? So just a quick review. This one is already completed. Um, you would, I guess, you would need to know um, or get your hands on HSG 215. Um, those of us who have the last lesson, you can take a look back at Schedule 2A. Uh, the principles of good practices uh, for the control of exposure to substances hazardous to health um, in the cost regulation most of the uh, most of the so-called hierarchy came from there right eliminate and whatever have you would have been in that particular hierarchy um, assignments uh, well we have gotten really none from the uh, from this class anyway so um, keep them coming and remember you can uh, email them um, the office is still open in Duncan Village, um, San Fernando, between the hours of, I think it's 8.30 to 2.30 p.m. anyway, right? Um, give this one a go. Remember, what you have to do is really, um, you have to really give it a try in writing. Uh, the, the answers are all here, of course, right? But it's how you would write it over into your own words. And remember, writing is the key at the diploma level anyway, right? So once you get that sorted out, um, a quite a simple one from about 2018, you should be um, good to go, right? So I'll put this one out in a couple of minutes again. These will not be edited in any way. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it as is. 
right uh, it's gonna take a longer to get them edited anyway and um, we still have this week's lesson to consider right so you have just seen I think um, my son at the back there right so I'll, I'll close this one off and uh, hopefully we will be able to make some contact this week again this week also um, you know probably not to say it on on this video but I think this week is a week for results um, for some of our students anyway right so we will be in contact once we get doing some knee wash anyway right stay safe i'll see you all back for another video all the best bye